Professor Joffe, very many thanks for having uh, delivered two wonderful speeches at Ceres uh, during the seminar that we have had this weekend. So my first question is the following. According to you, what would be the geopolitical importance of the changes that have occurred in uh, Tunisia, Libya and Egypt last year? Well, of course, we don't yet know quite what the impact is going to be. But I think it's difficult to deny that in many respects what we've seen is a genuine paradigm shift. By which I mean that we really have to rethink and reconsider the way in which we now conceive of the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, and that has enormous implications. It means, for example, in geopolitical terms, that Europe has to rethink very carefully its policies towards the region and the way in which it engages with it in terms of European security <clears throat> and in terms of trying to foster the developments inside the region that will complete the democratic transition process that has now begun. In terms of the Middle East itself, I think it means that we're going to see a new alignment of power inside the region. I personally think that Egypt is inevitably going to compete with Saudi Arabia in trying to determine which of the two states should be the dominant state inside the Arab Middle East at least. And that has implications for relations with Iran. And we still don't quite know what those will be. But you may remember that the Egyptian authorities were much less willing to condemn Iran than was the Mubarak regime before them. And as far as North Africa itself is concerned, I think the success of transition inside Tunisia and the potential for an effective transition inside Libya too, together with the new warming in relations between Morocco and Algeria, revives the potential of regional organizations like the Maghreb Arab Union and the potential thereby for integrated endogamous economic growth in the region. And that would be very hopeful if that were to be the case. France and Britain uh, have been supporting authoritarian regimes such as the Ben Ali regime, uh, the Mubarak regime. Why suddenly were they so concerned about democracy building in Libya? I'm not sure that they were concerned about building democracy in Libya at all. My personal feeling is that the events of last year inside Libya that precipitated the civil war there um, provided an opportunity for major powers in Europe, backed by the United States, to remove a regime that they profoundly disliked. And even though they may have relied upon it when it was in power as being a partner in security affairs, in reality they would be very happy to see it gone. So really what you saw was an attempt to remove a regime, um, not really to replace it with anything, but simply to get rid of it. And the question then is, to what extent can they construct the new regime that would emerge? And the answer probably is they can't do very much. It's been quite notable that neither state has been particularly active in the attempts to reconstruct Libya now that the Gaddafi regime has actually gone. And I doubt very much whether they really are so concerned about democracy there. What they want is a stable environment in which they can gain contracts for their commercial sectors and from which they can exploit the oil and gas that is essential to European needs and demands. Finally, uh, my last question uh, is about Syria. Do you believe that uh, the West uh, is about to intervene and to uh, play a role in the political change in uh, this country? I think in the case of Syria there's a great irony, and that is that uh, nobody is prepared to intervene, no one's prepared to take responsibility for the consequences of intervention, and therefore the only outcome that's left is either going to be uh, collapse into civil war, with all the implications that has, all of them bad, or otherwise a negotiated outcome. And the irony lies in the fact that European powers and the United States have counted themselves out as valid interlocutors. 
they're not going to be acceptable to one side or the other, particularly not to the regime. And the only parties that aren't in that position are Russia and China, and particularly China. And that seems to me enormously ironic to think that the two states that refuse to support United Nations resolutions demanding respect for human rights in Syria should be the two regimes that in the end provide a mechanism by which the conflict might be resolved. <laughs>